So, this drawing for painting business, and uh, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to heckle. Um, <clears throat> so, you want a piece of paper the same size as your painting surface. Here is my painting surface. Um, and what I do is I actually give myself that wiggle room because I always find my drawings get bigger and bigger. So, I've just done an inch border with charcoal around that. And then I have, if you can see, the little still life in the corner there. So, I'm actually doing it from life. And uh, <clears throat> this is where you can make all your mistakes. If you're sort of painting, you don't want to make the mistakes in paint, otherwise you'll be there forever. And there have been times when I was doing a life painting uh, over about six weeks, and I spent three weeks painting the foot because it was always in the wrong place. So uh, if you can actually uh, <clears throat> get uh, your composition down on a piece of paper, and I'll show you how to transfer this. This is for future work, not so much for today, but I did want to show you this technique. And also, this will help me take you through how to um, place things on a canvas, how to do a still life. So if I start here with my, my uh, Dutch gin bottle, uh, which is probably here. Um, so you can be as messy as you like. So I want the basic shape. You can draw through things. So there's my little top, my little handle. And then I want to uh, relate that to the blue bottle, which is about here. And I'm looking at the shapes in between. So there's a shape here. So we got the blue bottle. Blue bottle, I think. Blue bottle. And then I've got this yellow jug here. And I'm just looking at where the yellow jug comes. And it's about here. And how to do ellipses. I like to do them like this. So uh, you always trust that one of those uh, marks, of one of those uh, ellipses is right. So I'm coming down here with my jug, and I realize I can't put the handle on, but never mind. So I'm coming down here with my jug and a handle. And then so I've got my blue bottle, my blue bottle, my gin bottle, my jug. And then I can actually draw through these. So again, if you want to get the ellipse right on the bottom of a jug, draw through it. Uh, and here uh, I've got this red bowl here which comes, I'm just seeing what, how much of the blue bottle I can see through that red bowl. So it comes around here. And again, drawing through those ellipses. And in fact, that's probably not tall enough. So it needs to come down a bit. So this, here you can make your mistakes. And why I recommend charcoal is that you can erase it so easily. You can uh, do just a proper charcoal drawing, getting the tones right and how the shadows fall. But this is just this is a working drawing. This drawing is going to do something. So there's me lemon, and here's me other lemon. Sort of there. So pretty much that will probably do. <clears throat> and uh, just to get the symmetry of objects, I don't know if you remember. So if you actually go down the centre, you can actually balance both sides. It's a little bit harder with a jug, um, and again with this and lemons or whatever. So that's pretty much all you need to do. And then, in the best blue Peter fashion, I have one I uh, prepared earlier. So here we are. So this is uh, <coughs> the one I prepared earlier. And what I did was, is actually just go on the back with charcoal. You put it on your, uh, so you're creating your own carbon paper. You're putting it on your painting service, service, and as I, I couldn't, couldn't actually quite, quite put on the handle of the jug, jug I can actually, actually shove it over a bit, and then you press through with a pencil, which I just had, or biro. Um, biro, biro, biro. The biro, and then that carbon you put on the back, the charcoal you put on the back, will appear on here. It's quite faint, but I have done it earlier. Okay, so that's just a useful technique in painting generally. I just wanted to share that with you. And it means this time doing your drawing wasn't wasted. Right, let's crack on with the painting. I don't know if you can see, I've got vague outlines because I did do it earlier. So I'm just going to take a round brush. Um, I've got uh, the colours I want, I hope. So I've got some yellows there. I've got some reds knocking around in my posh doodah and a blue and general brown, so you want a reasonable varied palette. I'm going to take a round brush and I'm going to block in, well I'll actually, at this point, even though I've actually managed to fit it all on the canvas, which is always a big plus, 
I'm actually just going to block in and I'm still going to look at the uh, actual still life while I'm doing it. So I can adjust at this stage. So I'm just going to water down some black. I'm going to have a nice black chunky outline, I hope. Um, are people actually uh, painting along, doing it at the same time? Hard to tell, so I'm just going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I've uh, just switched to me, so I know what I'm doing. So I've got my vague outline of this blue bottle. And even at this point, you can paint and draw through things. Because with acrylics, you can paint over things. So if I imagine the shape of that bottle, which I can't quite see. Actually, it's got a bit more of a dumpy bottom. So that's the blue jug, I hope. And then I've got my yeah, uh, sorry, blue bottle. And then I've got my yellow jug. And I'm just looking where the uh, the nozzle of the jug points to the blue bottle, and that comes down a little bit further. And again, goes. No, that's no good. So I've done it wrong, but never mind, I can paint over it. So this is my ellipse for the top of my jug. Oh, gone a bit wobbly, never mind. And then you want an ellipse for the bottom one, bottom part of the jug, and in fact that's gone wrong, so that needs to be a bit further down there. And then desperate to fit the handle on, uh, which does this sort of thing. So we're just pretty much drawing with a brush at this moment. And then I've got a lemon, which is here. So I'm just looking at how the rel lemon relates to that jug. And it's sort of here. Quite a fat little lemon, that one. It's quite circular. Yeah. There we go. And this lemon here, being more lemon shaped coming down here and then we've got <clears throat> the red bowl so I'm just looking at where it comes in relation to the lemon so it's about there and I'm just gonna do a nice ellipse I hope and again don't worry about making mistakes at this point you can always correct there we go and down here and then I'm just looking at where the bottom of that relates to that lemon. No one shadows. Don't forget putting in your shadows will make the object sit in space. I'm just thinking about the shadows of these things. And my lips has gone a bit wonky, but never mind. And then we've got the little handle-y thing at the top. And the handle over here. So I'm just blocking in the basic structure. And then uh, I'm doing the Dutch gin bottle. So I'm just looking at that, uh, probably the top coming down. And then what you can do, because it's got this very nice round shape, pretty much like that. And then come down here, even though it's got a bit close, but never mind. There we go. And this comes down here. And again, I could think about doing an ellipse here. And an ellipse there. Mm -hmm. Block that in. And I'm just looking at what's going on here. Up and round and round the corner. Like that. And then there is some background to think about. So I've got the table doing that. And it's over here. And I've got the corner of the room doing that. And then I've got this, I can't remember what it's called now, Dido Rail? No, not Dido Rail, Dado Rail. Sort of, maybe, kind of. I'm not going to worry too much about the background, but there are, the objects themselves do actually cast shadows. And perhaps I should have put the black somewhere else. So I'm just going to clean that brush, and then we'll crack on to proper painting. I'm just going to remove that black. going to move it over a bit so it doesn't interfere. So I'm using a stay wet palette. 
which is basically kitchen towel, greaseproof paper, and a shadow dish. Uh, so that works very well. So let's just clean that off. And right now, let's get the big painting brushes out. So um, as with landscapes, it's always useful to first do uh, the background. So I know actually my wall colour is chiffon, uh, lemon chiffon yellow, tone four. So I'm going to mix up lemon yellow and white, which is looking a bit grisly, I must admit. So I've got lemon yellow and white here, and I just want to slap some on. Um, the reason why I suggested doing it not on a white surface is again the snow blindness you get with when you're painting on white. It's hard to see what uh, colours you're doing, what tones you're doing uh, on a very white surface. They always will seem darker than they really are. So I'm just going to slap that on. So this will probably be an undercoat. I notice my paints are rather feeble and thin, which is annoying. We might have to do another coat. And I don't know if we'll have a chance to finish this in this lesson, but I hope I can get you started and you can finish at your leisure. So I just want to have this background in. I'm not going to worry about the bricks too much and the black it's all wet, which is annoying. I might leave that for a little bit. Uh, so I'm mixing up uh, white and lemon yellow. That's uh, definitely going to need another coat, but never mind. And then we've got uh, the white, which is slightly off-white. Um, white of the wall. Oops. Um, and so I'm just going to pick up some pure white, and I think that will be too bright for this. Well, I don't know. As it's so rather feeble and thin. Let's go with it. And so uh, you don't have to be too neat at this stage because you can always slap on the other things. And these big black lines allow you to still be able to find your original drawing. I'll put a bit more lemon yellow up here. With the paints, I'm just using the little ones I got from the works, which I am finding rather thin. So uh, the more you pay for your acrylics, the better they are. So I'm just going in here. I think most of this is dry. I suppose the one nice thing about acrylics is that they do dry very quickly. So paint the background. Paint, paint, paint. Ooh, it's coming together already. Um, as I say, this will probably need a second coat, which is a bit depressing when you're painting, but it's just blocking things in quite quickly. And then I might actually do the tablecloth. And again, that will affect how you think about the tone. So, and also when you're doing a still life, it's quite useful right, uh, <coughs> to look at the shape the objects create. So you're kind of looking at their footprint. So down here, around the corner, and then there's a shadow there. Um, and then it comes around here. And around here. So this, so this is pretty, pretty much, much the house painting, painting phase of the painting. I've just got a bit of yellow on my brush, I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, I'm just looking at what's going on here. So this again, so by painting this white here, you can relate the tones of your painting to this very bright white tablecloth. And again, that's going to need another coat. But at least I'm blocking it in. And you uh, can always continue on this painting when I'm not here. I'll give you a chance to do this. Just paint, paint around the kitchen. To uh, be more refined. This is going to be kind of rough and ready because it's going to be quite quick. Um, just gonna, I've just had a little bit of grey, a little bit of black to make grey here. To block that in. Just block in that shadow there. And then a little bit of grey in the lemon yellow, which made no difference at all. So I can just go in and block those areas in. <coughs> okay. 
Right, now we're going to start tackling the objects individually. So what I want to do is actually the furthest object away first. So that will be the blue bottle. Let me just adjust my palette around. So it's one of these lovely cobalt blue bottles. Well, in fact, I'm going to use French ultramarine I can, uh, and a bit of cobalt. So my blues, I can lift this up and show you. So I have a selection of blues here. Where are you? Maybe I go here. That's better. Uh, um, so I've got French ultramarine, which is more or less the colour of the bottle. This is, I think, primary blues, uh, which is a bit warmer. This is cobalt blue, which, as you can see, is quite pale. So cobalt blue is like French ultramarine, but a bit feebler. This is Prussian blue, which is very, very dark, dark, but a very different colour, which is, is uh, a, a terrible, terrible bully, and that's just a few other colours. So I'm going to start with French ultramarine for my bottle. I'm just going to change my water because it's gone all cloudy, you can see. Uh, so you need fresh water um, most of the time. A. So fresh water, some kitchen towel, a big old brush. So I'm using my biggest long flat just because I don't like to faff around and I want to cover a large area. So when we're doing the objects, we're just going to have a variation on the basic colour. So this is... <clears throat> uh, let me put it here. This is the uh, French ultramarine, which I'm going to go for, and paint in my bottle. So I'm going to block it in, pretty much, colour it in, and then I'm going to come back and produce some variations on the theme, I think. And again, I don't have to be too neat at this stage. So that's your basic colour of your bottle. Hmm. I think it needs to be darker, so I'm just going to add a little touch of Prussian blue to it, because I just want it to be that little bit darker. Woo, that's quite dark, so I want some dark areas. So it's darkest down here, and it's quite dark over here, and over here. I'm not worrying about being too neat at this stage. The time will come, so we're just blocking in big areas here. So while I've got that drying, let's see what's going on here. It really is quite dark, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of black to it here. I'm just looking at the foot of the bottle. It is very dark. A little bit darker over here too. So that's just a little bit of black mixed in with the paint. And something going on there, not entirely sure what. <clears throat> so again, I'm now going to clean my brush. And now I'm going to tackle the, uh, the lustrousness of this gin bottle. So it's stone waves, earth glare, and um, stone, uh, salt glaze, earthenware, isn't it? So it's got this nice sheen to it. So I'm going to pick up. Um, basically, some <clears throat> so this is burnt sienna, which is a bit zingy, and I'm going to pick up a bit of burnt umber if there is any there, there isn't very much. Add a little bit of black to that, and maybe a little bit more black. Yeah, that's not bad. And then within that, there are variations. So again, I can go on here, and oh, perhaps I should have mixed up some more. I'm going to mix up a little bit more and add a bit of black to that. Yeah, that's pretty good colour. I'm just going in there. I think that needs a little bit more black. So I'm just popping on the glaze. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to this as well. So I can have a variation of tones. So that's got a little bit of white. So there's whiter bits along here and down here. Oh no. Probably not. So just really blocking in. So this is more or less an underpainting. And in fact, I think that needs a little bit more white. And we've got the handle. This is your basic tone for the whole thing. 
dark black it's very light down there so i'm going to pick up a little bit more burnt uh sienna which is that terracotta color which i think i might keep Ooh. so i am varying the color more in this one because it's got this annoying luster glaze which is going to be quite hard to paint but let's not worry about that now and again a little bit more burnt sienna tiny bit of black uh, maybe a tiny bit of white Ooh, that's quite good. So I'm looking at and lightening the area. So here uh, in my photograph, so you've got this lustrous uh, jug, but it's picking up uh, the light is bouncing off the white tablecloth and back at it. So in this little bit of a corner of this jug, it is ah, trick, trick. <clears throat> Hang on, excuse me, I'm adjust my painting. And also, I don't know how many of you are painting, standing up or sitting down. Painting uh, like this is often very freeing. I don't know if I'd like to go that far away, but this is why you have these lovely long handled brushes, is that you can be that little bit further away from your painting. When you tend to be up close like this, you're getting too involved with the detail. You want to be able to judge it from afar. Ooh. So I've got some squishy glazes so here i'm lucky because this is still wet so it will blend in but by the time i come back and do something to it it'll be dry and in fact my brush has got very claggy so i think i'm going to have to clean it my brush has got too full of paint so i'm going to have to give it a quick wipe down <clears throat> pick up some more paint Ooh, a bit too peculiar oh i don't know go for it so you're getting uh, this nice blendability that you can get with acrylics while they're still wet you can get these um, in uh, retarders you can get acrylics that dry slower as well but um, I find the retarders water down the paint too much so um, I, I don't really like them because I like I like the colors to go on big and opaque I can't be doing with doing washes with acrylics use it what they're good for which is being opaque so i'm just picking up some lighter variations there so uh i'm getting very involved with this jug so i've uh i've got here uh, my basic color and i've just added a little bit more white so i can get this kind of glow i hope over here but i'm not relying on this as being my finished jug as it were it's just a work in progress so a little bit more black a little bit more Burnt sienna in my palette, um, and I can go over here, squish, 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 squash, 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 and I can go around here and do that handle. Yeah, and I want a bit more dark, I think, in there. There's some dark areas I've missed. Uh, this is over here, and I think my jug is a little bit wonky. I'm just going down there now I need more dark in there and it is helpful to work from real life rather than a photograph I think um, so I was taking a, a page out of Marie Kondo's book find objects that spark joy and paint them <laughs> right so I got this nice sludgy color over here and I do like these uh, square brushes, you get a nice structural stroke. So, and again, my brush has got claggy, but what I might do is pick up a slightly smaller brush. And I just wanted to find the darks in the handle, so I'm just mixing up a bit of more black in my sludgy colour. I've got a handle here, so that's quite dark. Yeah. What's it doing? And then it stops being dark. And oh, and then I've got, and suddenly you notice uh, what's happening here because this is lustrous. It's actually reflecting uh, this red bowl. Uh, so what I might do is define it. So I'm adding a bit more white again. I can actually there's light here. I can make that a bit lighter 
a bit lighter around the jug. I mean, around the, uh, the reflection of the bowl, and there's something going on here too. So at this point, I am going to stop doing the jug. But you're getting the idea of being able to apply this paint quite uh, liberally. And I might do something a little bit crazy and think about putting the light area here. But no, I'm going to leave that to the end because the paint is still wet and it's not doing what I want it to do. So again, just blocking in. I'm going to smoosh that round because it's still wet. Getting a bit more of a shape. Okay, so I'm going to have to get some clean water again because I'm going to go on to this little yellow jug. And yellow is a colour that uh, gets mucky really, really quickly. So uh, always have clean water, clean brushes, clean yellow when you're painting yellow. Okay, so yellow jug. It is yellow, but it's not as lemony yellow as the wall. It's got a bit of warmth to it. It's kind of almost beige. So I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre, the colour of mustard. Mix that in with some lemon yellow from the walls and see what happens. That's still too yellowy, so a bit more of that and this. So that's white and yellow ochre and lemon yellow. What do we think? Oh, that's not bad. Unfortunately, it's almost the same colour as the background. So I'm just going to add a little bit more white to it. And look at where the light is falling on the jug. Yeah. A bit more white, a bit more white. I don't know where to put it there, so there we go. A bit more white. So I'm just looking at my little jug. And I think I might need to do a second coat, but never mind. I can get rid of that now. No, this is all wet, it's never going to go. So I might have to do a second coat, get rid of that black line. But on the other hand, I like that black line. So over here I've got the handle. And I'm going in for a different tone. So it's quite useful when you sort of establish the colour of an object if you have different tones mixed up. That looks almost exactly the same. But never mind. And then we've got some nice yellow coming up here. And again, my brush has got claggy. So I'm just going to wipe it down. And think about how to do that shading. So I had a theory, if you use a tiny bit of purple, with your yellow, whoa, this is my very posh purple, which is very fiendish, but lovely, look at that, gorgeous. Um, I'm just gonna add a bit of water to that so you can see. But if I add that to the yellow, it would hopefully neutralize, but I think the, ooh, well, I don't know, that could work. Uh, so that was just adding ordinary yellow to this purple. So I've got something resembling an almost uh, shadow-like property of this jug. Woo! Which I think I might need to add some more lemon yellow to. Oh, there we go. So it's quite a good rule of thumb, if you all remember your colour wheels, to take the opposite colour of whatever you're painting and add that to it. So uh, with yellow, it's purple. It doesn't quite work so well with red, uh, blue and orange. But red and green work very well. They neutralise down, and particularly um, one of my favourite things, as you all know, is Elysian Crimson and um, Viridian Green. So I'm just blocking that in. So I just want to help, hopefully free you all up in your painting practice by knowing that this is an underpainting and you can add, oh, add bits to it later. So I'm just going in here. Oh yeah, as I say, I might have to do a second coat. Uh, and then we've got some nice yellow there. And I like black lines. I'm trying to think of the artists who use them a lot. In the 20s, I can't quite remember. But to have these big chunky black lines around your subject, I think is quite nice. I'm, I'm not worrying too much about the outlines. That one's annoying me. But other than that, I'm not going to worry about it too much. <clears throat> And I think I had too much water in my brush then, so this has ended up rather thin. So I'm taking up this neutral colour again uh, to add my handle, one hopes. And then I'll actually look and see what's happening. So a bit more lemon yellow in there. I want to blob some on here. 
So when you start looking at these shiny objects, reflecting the objects around them, it will affect their colour as well. So in fact, uh, I'm just looking here, here as well, this white tablecloth is reflecting back into the jug, so it's actually much lighter there. And then over here, eek. I want to catch that edge of that judge, which is catching the light from the wall. Apart from that, the paint's still wet. Um, and then I might want to actually take the brush strokes around here because it's a circular jug. So you're getting that idea of circular motion. And I'm lucky because the paint is still wet that I can blend it a bit. So I was talking to, was it Trish? Uh, about painting her path. If you actually take your brush strokes around how the object is shaped that often is a big help to show the viewer of your painting uh, what shape that actually is so i'm considering most of this an undercoat at the moment but it's a good start so i'm going to have to if i want uh, i'm going to have to give that a second coat which is kind of annoying um, <clears throat> and then uh, i will go back and add some more hopefully thicker paint it's these cheap paints from the works that are very thin and haven't got much covering power. Meanwhile, onto the reds. So I've got a little palette of reds here. So I've got a dark red, which is Elysian Crimson. And uh, this is a sort of, uh, this is just a generic crimson apparently, and that is a bright red. So the thing itself is this bright red. And actually that is a posh paint, that's golden. Whoa, gosh. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I can immediately tell the difference. So, um, golden are seen as some of the best uh, acrylics you can buy. And I just got this tiny little set for Christmas uh, of six tiny little tubes. But I can tell immediately that this paint is just gorgeous. So it does affect um, how your painting comes out, um, uh, the quality of the materials you use. But the Galleria sets, they're pretty good. I mean, they're pretty standard. And I think I found the uh, the Winsor & Newton Professional range. Oh, it's just, again, gorgeous. They, they put more pigment in or something. Because uh, um, acrylic paints are just basically um, emulsion. <laughs> I kind of need another coat, but never mind. Okay, so there's a bit of variation uh, within here. It's, it's got this kind of crinkly edge that's picking up a uh, crinkly uh, sort of reflection that's picking up from the bottle. And we've got that red handle there. Red, 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 red. And then I'm going to go use this crimson, which is actually that nice heavy body set that uh, Cass Arts had on sale for a while. And I'm going to use that for the, the lower one. Perhaps I should have cleaned my brush first. Again, dry my brush, and uh, in this crimson, which is much darker, I'm trying to persuade it to cooperate with me. Whoa. Oh gosh, it's heavy body, it's been hanging around for a it's gone gelatinous. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> but it's quite a good, right colour. So I'm just taking that up. That's gone very peculiar. It's been hanging around for about a week. So that was the uh, nice heavy body we got from the works. I mean, from um, Cass Arts. I recommend it because it was a bargain, but some of the colours were really odd. But their crimson was good. So I'm, I'm looking, looking at, at that. that. And what, what I, I might, might do is just add a bit of oomph to it. it. I'm just, just going to take, take up a dark green, oh dear, or a green, and mix that up. So I've got a green. So this again, this is complementary colours, and that crimson, and we're getting real a little on the green side. We want it to be a bit crimsony. So we're getting a much nicer, well, very, very dark red. I might add some of that brighter crimson so you can see. So a good rule of thumb is use the uh, opposite colour. And again, I might have to wait for that to dry, but you can see, so that's got this nice darkness to it. So I'm just going along there to catch the bottom. And there's all sorts of funny things happening here. And then I've got the edge of that thing there. And uh, I just want to catch the bottom of that. 
because uh, it's kind of reflecting me. And then, I'm just thinking what I want to do. So it's going in there, make that seem darker. So it's all red, but it is darker. And I have managed to create a shadow by using green in the red. Now, what am I going to do about that? Uh, so I'm just going to pick up that crimson and see if I can use this to darken that area down. Now this has got a weird texture unfortunately because it is this heavy body colour that's been allowed to lie around for a week. And also over here. And when dealing with trying to make something lighter, um, don't add white to red because then you end up with pink. So I just want this area here to be a bit lighter. That's actually reflecting the wall. So I'm going to add a bit of yellow. Let's see if that works. So I can lighten a red with yellow rather than white. And you get a, a, a better effect than if you were to add pink. Yeah, maybe a bit more of that. Whoa. And this is wet, so I think I might have to wait for it to dry to vary that colour a bit more. Okay, uh, and I'm going to have to change my water. Okay, so I think I'm going to do the lemons now, and good colour to start with is lemon yellow. So I'm going to pick up just pure lemon yellow, and this is going to take two coats. The trouble with yellows is they are very transparent. So I'm going to add a bit of white to the lemon yellow, in the vague hope it might thicken up a bit. Or not. So an undercoat of lemon. Oh dear. That is very thin. I'm just going to use a clean dry brush because it's really not picking up this uh, paint. I think there's too much water in my brush. So I'm picking up pure lemon yellow, slapping it on, which is not making much difference at all. And add a bit of white to that. Oh, there we go. So that's the white and lemon yellow. And I'm really <laughs> ploughing it on really quite thickly here. But I wanted to get that coverage. I need to cover up all those black lines having told you to paint them. Uh, so I'm adding a bit of yellow to this. Oh gosh, they're so thin. So I'm just adding white to actual yellow, a uh, deeper yellow. Oh, there we go. Ha ha ha. And I'm going over here. And I think I want it to be a bit more yellow over here. But then <clears throat> again, I want those shadows within the lemons. And if I pick up uh, purple, so I've got my uh, lemon yellow. So again, I'm neutralizing my yellow using purple. Just there. And let's see what happens. In fact, it's got kind of a blue tinge. Well, never mind. I will be coming back and doing another coat. Ah, it's driving me mad. Um, and then I realise I haven't done the middle of my jug. Um, which is pretty much grey. So I think I might add a little bit of blue to my grey just to make it a bit less dodgy. So I've got black here and if I add white to that you get grey obviously but it's kind of a dull colour. Well, it's not too bad actually. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that to buck it up a bit. There we go. Getting a cooler grey. So I want to put that area in there. Yeah. And then I'm going to add progressively more white to that to make up a variation of tones. And then I can come back when that's dry, I hope, to catch the ridge of that jar. Ooh, shadows. <clears throat> ah, shadow, shadow, shadow. So again, a shadow colour. I like to generally mix up uh, a variation of brown and blue. You get a better ver version of that. But I think the brown's dried up. Oh, have I got a bit of brown there? A bit chunky. And a blue. And a bit more blue. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. 
So I'm mixing that in with um, blue and brown. And it kind of makes a, a sort of a more genial grey, I find. So I'm going to wipe that and see what happens. So it's got a little bit more brown in there, so it's a warmer grey. Do I want a warmer grey? Yeah, I do. So I've got a shadow here. Covering power. Uh, now I'm going to add a little bit more white to that. And again, if you want to warm it up again, add a little bit of yellow ochre. So yellow ochre to a cool grey sort of warms it up a bit. So there are some lighter areas within here. And I think that is too dark. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to it, which has got a little bit of yellow in it. And go over here. Uh, and then this is throwing a shadow, that's not dark enough. So again, blue and brown to make that shadow. This object is casting this circular shadow. So this is a good lesson in underpainting. You can twiddle endlessly with still lights because they don't move around. And uh, <coughs> you can get very hyper-realistic. There's a great tradition in America for very hyper-realistic still lives. If you look online, still life painting and acrylics, you'll see what I mean. Um, but you don't have to go that detailed. And that way madness lies, in my opinion. However, so I'm just putting these shadows on just to ground them, really. And then I'm going to think about the shadows the objects are casting on the wall. So here, oh, that's a nice lemony shaped shadow. That's quite handy. Indicates a lemon. So that's pretty much your undercoat. Um, I don't know if you could see uh, the value of the black lines. I really like those heavy black lines, but you know, you might not. Um, so I'm just going to let that dry. Well, uh, what I might do is just. I will start this way and work that way. I'm going to um, leave the background for the moment uh, because that can be done at your leisure, as it were. So I want to uh, perhaps do this jug. So a good way of approaching an object is to have variations of the tones that you want. So I've got my, um, I've got my yellow, my uh, mixture of yellow, yellow ochre and white to be the color of my jug. Maybe it's a bit yellow in that. That's not bad, actually. And then I've mixed in a little bit of purple to make these variation of tones. And I can always pick up my greys if necessary. Talking of which, I'm just going to give it a little spray. <clears throat> just to keep the colours active. So now, whoa, are we getting the... Yes, there we go. So I'm just looking at my little jug. And I'm just trying to cover up that black line. Um, and this is the lightest tone. And in fact, I think I want a slightly yellower tone than this edge. The lightest tone of the jug is about here. And I'm just popping on my brush strokes. And <coughs> there's a little bit of darkness. It's uh, sort of reflecting objects here. I might have to wait for that to dry a bit though. Just here. And then I'm going to pick up a slightly darker tone, a slightly yellower tone though. So I've got my yellow and a bit of yellow ochre. And I want that to be sort of here-ish. Oops, there you are. And I'm going to add a little bit more white to that for this area up here. And I've got my little spout just here. And I'm going to fiddle around with that. Oh, God. I'm fiddling. And over here. So here, this area here is picking up the light reflected from the wall. So I'm just going to mix up. It's kind of much warmer yellow. So a little bit more yellow ochre. And a bit of more actual yellow, which is this. And I can just see here. There's a bit there. And here. And here, so 
marking it on, hoping I can correct later. And then this area here, this is really quite pale, so this is picking up most of the light. Okay, I should have come in my eye. <clears throat> most of the light over here. I'm just dabbing on this colour here, and then it, this, the top bit of the jug handle is picking up the light mostly, but it is got a little bit of reflected light down the back here. And you can see I'm using this long flat brush, but I can still get quite a good angle. So I'm picking up some of the tonal colour, which is the yellow mixed in with the uh, yeah, uh, uh, purple. purple. And I can just pop those in there, I hope. And you can, you can see, see by I'm varying the colour, so I'm actually still, still using the colour I put on originally for this dark area here. But over here, again, this yellow jug is picking up the uh, reflected light from the tablecloth. So I can go in there, Ooh, and I can see a lemon vaguely reflected in it. Ah. And then it goes a bit darker grey over there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of grey, a little bit of grey, which has got blue in it, so it's turned green. So I'm, a little bit of purple to make a slightly darker variation on the tone. And I'm just going in here where it's darker. In fact, I think it should be darker again. So getting this idea of a three-dimensional form in space. Uh, not just having it all one colour. So it's got light reflected there and then actual light from here. And then I've got a little bit over here. And I want to go darker again to get that darkness of that jug. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. And I just want that to be darker. Ooh, I think it's gone blue again. So there's quite a dark area just here and along here. Can you see the reflected light in the jug handle? And actually that's quite a stark line. I'm just going to clean off that brush and see if I can soften that line a bit. So I'm just cleaning it, wiping it clean, clean of water, adding some yellow and see if I can soften that line a bit and button that up a bit. Yeah, but now I'm thinking about it. So I'm going to take a smaller brush Yeah. And do a bit of fluffing. <clears throat> this is a great technique in oil paints, but you can do it when acrylics are wet. So this is all still wet. So I've got this clean, dry brush, and I can just smooch over and create a soft edge there. And in fact, I'm just looking at the top here uh, to define the nice lightness of uh, the interior of the jug. I'm going to have to paint the background a bit grey, even though it is white. It's not. Uh, white in pure light, so I've got a lightish grey here. Oops, with some yellow in it. So I want to be able to define the, the white of the interior of the jug by having a off-white grey background behind it. So I'm just mixing up that lemon yellow in it. And then that's going to go green on me. So <clears throat> I was just uh, mixing some white into my uh, variation on grey. I think I'll have a little bit more white there. So I want that to be a little bit greyer. Uh, hmm, that seems a bit dark. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that. But you just need to define white areas by actually often the dark behind. And then I could suppose I could put the top of the dado rail in. And then I could think about the shadow of this jug. It's always a good idea to put the um, shadows of objects in because that sort of places them in space. So I've got this kind of mid gray here, which I think is a bit harsh. I'm just going to clean my brush off and fluff around a little bit. And again, it's the dark of the shadow is defining the edge of that <coughs> jug. And again, it's the dark of the shadow on the wall 
for finding that light area of that jug. Almost, almost, and then I'm going to go in, because I know that is still wet, I'm going to go in with some white here and try and soften that edge a bit. I maybe have a different shape brush. Yeah. Okay. Alright, and then I need a little bit more white here, I think. Oh, it's going up and around. But of course, the dado rail itself is casting an even deeper shadow. Right. I need to get perspective right. Ideally, you want these two lines to be parallel, but they are going into the corner. In fact, they're not there at all, but never mind. Put that there and that there. Right. I might wait for this area to dry a bit, so when I start applying the white paint, it's not going to mix in with the yellow there. That's me no one's doing. Ah, damn, it's all wet. Okay, okay let's do the blue jug. Again, clean water, switching colours. Okay, I really need my lemons to dry, and that was one thing I wanted to show you. Okay, back to my blues. So here we have my little gang of blues. I'm just going to use a separate little palette to mix up the variations of blue that I want. I'm going to take a medium size. That's my medium size. That's my big um, <clears throat> uh, brush, and I'm going to pick up ultramarine. Let's see where I can see it's lighter. Ooh, that's sort of working. Um, so you've got this very nice deep blue of the uh, bottle, and over here it's a little bit lighter. I think so. Let me know. It's a little bit lighter just here, and in fact that is picking up reflection from the wall again. I'm going to keep that straight. It's probably very subtle, but you can see there's a variation starting to build up. And again, that blue, oops, my brush needs to be dry. Dry my brush a lot. So I'm going to pick up that blue again, just here. Mmm, yum. And over here. And then you can see, well, uh, <clears throat> I didn't want to do too many glass objects because they can be pretty fiendish. But I'm just picking up oh, some light colours here. So you can see through the bottle, you can see the bottom of the bottle just there. And then with glass, and everybody says, oh, how do you paint glass? And then isn't it ghastly? And yes, it is. The only thing to do is actually paint what you see. Oh, spit. Sorry, I've just got green in me blue. Yellow. Uh, I mean, sorry, <laughs> yellow in my blue and it's gone green. So I'm going to pick up another one and I'm going to have my French ultramarine. Yum, yum, yum. Have a bit of cobalt blue, which can be fun, which is quite light. So I might use the cobalt blue to be the lighter areas within the bottle. And you just have to paint what you see, really. And it is quite complicated. Often you have to close one eye uh, to see what's going on. And I'm going to take a little bit of white, hopefully with no yellow on it, and mix that in to catch. So again, here you've got the reflection of the wall on your bottle. Oh, actually, I want to go this way. So I'm just going to take my... So it has a more three-dimensional effect. Ooh, that's almost working. And I've got a little bit of still this light area and there's all sorts of weird things happening within the jug. It's all quite complicated. Uh, and then I've got a little highlight there. And here, there's a little highlight. 
so a good tip uh, so I'm working at the moment while the paint is still wet so it's all smushing around very nicely but a good tip is to just have the colors you need uh, mixed up already the colors that you want to use mixed up already and then you can just go and grab them and perhaps don't use too many colors so I've just got French ultramarine the cobalt blue and a lighter version thereof just so I can add some uh, lighter passages within here and this paint is just beginning to dry uh, there's something happening here I'm picking up my cobalt blue just there is something happening here hmm. and then a little bit more white so a little bit more white than my blues and I'm just going to put that in there and then reflecting a light or something there is something going on here and then I'm going in with my French ultramarine here so getting the idea of this uh, uh, the blueness and darkness of the bottle so what I want to do is actually oop up some of the shadows within the bottle so again I'm going to have a bit of French ultramarine French ultramarine and then a little bit of this Prussian blue which is really really dark but that seemed to make a very nice dark blue which I want here really so the darkest bit of a piece of glass is generally on the edge because all the other bits you can see through so you get the darkest bit on the edge of the bottle jug whatever glass whatever you're painting so I'm just trying to tidy up my top bit and then nice ultramarine goes down there and then I think that needs painting over and then we've got something happening down here so just a variation of blue so this is um, the Prussian blue which is really dark terrible bully but very dark that in there so we're getting the idea of uh, the transparency of the bottle and then the final uh, touch will be adding um, the highlights which I probably will leave to the end because the paint is still wet so that's here so I've got this this reflection from the wall onto the bottle and I've got those light areas there something weird happening here which I completely didn't notice which is quite light <coughs> so here so I've got this kind of reflection of the tablecloth happening here and then the object reflecting back on it is that working <coughs> and I could show you the highlights no, no I think I'll wait because it is still wet Lemon still wet. Okay, let's go on to the mustard jug. Again, I will change my water because it's all blue. Okay, back to the mustard jug. <coughs> so I have the variation of colours. Uh, so this is my mustard jug colour. And I'm just going to pick up some white. I can't find I didn't dry the brush. Anything happening? Yes, yeah, so I thought I might go on till about half past twelve. Half past twelve, all right with everybody? <laughs> uh, back to my lost jug. So I just want to put some lighter areas here. So this is all completely dry. <clears throat> and I want a variation on tones within it. So I've got this light here and here so this is being reflected off the tablecloth just there and there's a bit of light just here and here uh, <clears throat> and then I think I want to mix up some of my brown again so I'm going to pick up the burnt sienna <clears throat> which is really quite red in this uh, set and add a little bit of black just to knock it back a bit <clears throat> and think about adding the darker areas well actually that's more mid-tone so it's kind of a mid-tone area so that's lighter there so i'm just going to pick up a little bit of lighter color 
that indicate the shape of this Dutch gene here. Right here. Mm. And that comes down there, I'm looking at the light so you can start to see. So again, it's like painting shiny objects. At least I didn't give you a silver one. Um, to see uh, the, uh, the objects reflected in the object you are painting. So in fact, that is the red uh, bulb. And again, I'm actually taking the brush stroke around the object. In fact, I'll take that from some white. There's a darkness there. So I'm just going to pick up the dark, this dark strip just here. Which is not bad at all. <coughs> Use my brush. Uh, <coughs> and then, oh yes, so I'm getting a lighter version of that colour. Now maybe that's too light, probably too light. So I'm just going to add some more of that to that. And add this and this all. And again, taking the brush strokes to indicate what's happening. Gosh, it's like going down a rabbit hole starting to look at this. And that's got a bit of yellow in it. So I'm going to just add a little bit of yellow ochre. And again, it's reflecting the wall down here a bit. And over here, a little bit too. And then dry my brush right so there's a darkness within there so I'm just going to pick up actually the light to define the dark so just here there's a there's a little edge and then that gets like that oops ish and then this goes like this so these are basically the tones I can see within the jug, or not. Let's just get that right. Because I'm actually stuck with the basic colours, which was burnt sienna and black, really, uh, with a little tiny bit of yellow ochre, uh, I can refine the colours quite easily. And what I'm doing now is actually taking the brush around the shape of the jug. Uh, and it's, uh, I think, a handmade thing, so it's a bit lumpy. And there's a little tiny white just here. Not terribly big. And catch that little bit of yellow ochre there, catching the shoulder of the bottle. Hmm. So again, it's helpful to have the tones you're using within the object sort of they're available to you and also keep to a reasonably limited palette with acrylics because it's often really hard to find that color again so i'm just mixing up some darker versions of that and i just want to have it ah, have it here i think there we go Ooh, working working sort of and yeah. Let's get that shape to it, in fact. And then the handle. So I'm just going in here and I want to get rid of most of that black line. Um, and again, I'm going to mix up a little bit more of the dark colour. So this is ah, the burnt sienna and the black. Which is actually the handle is casting a shadow here. And I can always go back and correct shapes or things, things that have gone slightly wrong if I do the background. Uh, so that looks like nice. And a little bit more. A little bit lighter. So again, trying to take a brush stroke to round what that object's doing. I'll take a little bit of lightness there, I think. You know. Maybe that. And then we've got the handle. And then I think I want to finish this bit off. And again, that is actually 
catching the light reflected off the tablecloth. Okay, and a little bit lighter here. Okay, so as I say, with glass and reflective objects, you just have to paint what you see. It's not dry, no, that's not dry. So yeah, <clears throat> just before we finish, I'll hopefully screen back and actually add the highlights to these objects once they're dry. But lucky, I could dry really quickly. Now we've got the pesky problem of this uh, red bowl, which maybe I should have thought of something else. However. So I've got this uh, nice red, my posh red, I can actually put that on and see what it does there. Oh damn, my brush is wet, so I need to make sure my brush is dry. And I am getting this nice uh, sort of reflection here, I can actually go over, hmm, not too bad. I just want to have that a little bit lighter, I'm going to try and add a little bit of white to that. I'm going to take hope it's not going to go pink. So there is a lighter variation within that. And it's actually got this shadow, or rather reflection, created here. And then there's a little bit going on there. Turn it wet now. Um, <clears throat> and then, see how the crimson is going to react. Very strange. Uh, this is the heavy body. Crimson. Oh, that's, that's good. The second coat, that's, that's working. To get that deeper red. Really quite deep. So what I'm going to do is take my crimson, which you can see is very peculiar. Um, I'm going there. Oh, doing the second coat looks quite well though. There's something happening here. And then it's very dark at the bottom here because I didn't notice before it actually curves in <clears throat> and then I want to tweak that a bit so I want a little bit of crimson in here catch that reflection so I've got the crimson going on here but then I'm going to pick up that my nice bright red and really slap that on because I want to have that uh, variation of tone. So it's picking up light from the wall. Yeah. And doing that. So again, picking up my posh crimson. Whoa! A bit impasso, but rather nice. And in here too. Um, and then here, again, it's this red. <clears throat> and just to pick up a bit more crimson. At the edge of that reflection. Yeah, well, good work, I suppose. Yeah, oh, don't know about that though. And then there's a lighter variation just here as the <coughs> jug, uh, the bowl changes planes. So actually, this is still wet, so I'm just going in there with that, and I can actually blend it, but don't rely on that because that's not going to work. And then over here, again, I've got reflected light. And I'm very loath to add white to it, but we could give it a go. Right, white. Yeah, really, am I going to add white? Uh, over here, it's going to turn pink on me, I know it is. But it's picking up this light. And I think I'm going to go in with yellow, I hope, to blend that around it. Otherwise, I'll just end up with pink. And I've ended up with yellow. <coughs> Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of that crimson. Ah, damn pink on me. So I'm just picking up a little bit more of that crimson. Here. I 
think I might quit while I'm ahead on that one. Uh, <clears throat> meanwhile, back to the lemons. Um, I'm just going to get some more clean water. This lemon is dry, more or less. Yeah, more or less. Uh, <clears throat> okay, lemons. Uh, so again, I'm using primarily lemon yellow, although this one is a bit pale. I'm going to mix it in with ordinary yellow. Uh, ooh, a bit more lemon yellow. So I'm going to take this front lemon because this one is still wet. Uh, <clears throat> And I'm just looking at what the lemon does. So actually, uh, the more normal yellow, more normal yellow, mixed with lemon yellow is probably just about the right colour. So again, I'm going in there and looking at my lemon, seeing what it's up to. It's still wet. Um, and there we go. And then within, within that... that <coughs> I'm going to add a little bit of white. So I'm going to take white straight from the tube practically and pop it on here to get that, to make it seem rounder. You see, so it's mixing in with the yellows underneath. And that's very yellow just there. So I'm going to pick up some pure yellow. And there, and there. And there's, again, there's light. Uh, the lemon uh, has got this reflected light at the bottom here. So I will then worry about the other bits in a minute, the shading. Uh, and that needs to be nearly quite lemon yellow, I think. There we go. Um, and now I want to kind of sculpt the shadow in the lemon, as it were. I'm just going to take that, see if I can cover up that uh, outline. But it's a bit too feeble. Never mind. Um, and then, <clears throat> so I've got this variation, oh, it's all wet, of purple. Oh, it is. But I'm seeing a lot of bluey greens in there. So in fact, I'm going to take a little bit of cobalt blue and mix that in. And that's my sort of dark lemon shadow colour. It might be too dark, but let's give it a go. Oh, that's a bit too dark. Uh, it's fascinating once you start looking at lemons, you can't really stop. So I'm going to add a little bit of lighter colour in there. Because uh, I'm finding that a bit too strident. So again, looking at what your lemon's doing. And again, you can take your brush strokes around like the lemon. Uh, and there's a bit of shadow at the bottom. So you can use the hair. So there's a tiny bit of shadow here. And again, it's, uh, don't be frightened to really slap it on. You can always paint over it. So in fact, I think I need a little bit more blue in there. Even more. Uh, in this shadow just here. Popping that on. And then I want to soften the lines between these two tonal areas. So I've got my lemon yellow and I've got my shadow colour. So I'm going to take some lemon yellow, I've got my lemon yellow and my shadow colour, and I'm going to add a bit more oops, lemon yellow to it. Oh, in fact, it's too feeble. Um, and yellow, yellow. And kind of put that on to be, oops, I've got too much white, the junction of the shadows. Yeah, that's too pale. I'll just add a bit more dark to it. And we're kind of building it up. And then down here at the bottom, I'm just going to take some of that pure yellow and mix that in here. Because that colour is a little bit dark. 
but you're getting the idea of this lemon being a uh, a round object in space because it's getting this light from various various surfaces so it's got the overhead light and it's got the reflected light for the tabletop I want to soften that a bit more so I need some more yellow I think actual yellow just here and you can see you can do quite a lot while it's still wet in there a bit more. Maybe smooth that down. So look, a lemon. And I'm conscious uh, I'm coming up to half past twelve and I just want to show you a few handy dandy tips. Um, so you can continue on this painting if you so desire but I'm just going to put the highlights on which again requires new water. I need a little bit more white. I think I can have done with it. So I have here, this is golden. Uh, this is my crystal equivalent, these little tubes. So I'm going to use that because this is titanium white. So if you want a white to be white, use titanium white. Zinc white is more for mixing. So I'm just going to have a little squeeze on the white. And I'm going to pick up actually my round brush, and I hope it's clean, and look at putting the really zingy highlights on this. So... Oh dear, I haven't done the inside of the jug. Anyway, let's start with the lemon. I just want to make sure this brush is completely dry and clean. Hopefully it isn't. Completely dry and clean. And I'm going to pick up some of that white. And I just want to put the little highlights here. So, ping, ping, another ping, another ping. So I'm actually going to build that up in dots. And then we've got the handle. And uh, <clears throat> we've got the edge of the jug. I'm sorry I didn't finish this, but that will have a little gleam there. Oops. Have a gleam. So if you start looking, you start seeing the gleams. It's got a gleam there. A little gleam over here. And then one just here. And then the lemon. Uh although this is still wet, it should still work, so you can put on this kind of pitted green for like the skin of the lemon. I must have gone white. Why am I doing that? I'm running out of words. So you get that nice green. In fact, I might get a more of a big one on there. And again, I'm just going to clean dry brush, pick up a good old blob of it on the end of your brush. I learnt that from Rob Carrot, so let's not talk about that. Um, and we're going to have a gleam there, a gleam there, and now my brush has got some red on it. I'm just going to clean that. <coughs> and, and then I've got this big one in the bottle, which I'll be a bit loath to do, but what the hell. Uh, let's go for it. So we're getting the idea of this kind of gleaming of uh, the very shiny objects. And you should always leave the last bits of gleam uh, for the end of the painting. Uh, although I don't think this painting's finished. And what I will do, maybe, probably, is go in and give it another coat down here. And also the yellow at the back. Uh, give it another coat. If I think I might like to finish this now. Getting quite into it. Okay, so... Um, uh, I think that's it.